Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And today is not a heavy day, meaning I'm going to jump across the pond on top of the lily pads. So just touching on some topics lightly and then jump to another pad. So it has begun. And what I mean by that is uh, there is some consolidation that is starting to occur in this space. And I was on a panel, discussion panel with Sam I am on Sunday and along with Jeff and Chip with their on the chain channel. And we were really talking about how it's probably the right time in the space where we're going to see a lot of consolidation, whether that be through acquisitions or um, joint ventures. It's just going to really be happening in the rest of this year. And it appears that this is one of the first big ones. Coinbase has acquired Tagomi, and it will allow them to bolster their offer offerings to the institutional investors due to what Coinbase says is a swell in demand. So it provides that custody brokerage trading, not only with FX market and equities, but with crypto. And they still need to go through some regulatory approvals, but I think you can expect it to close later this year. And the next lily pad is VeChain. Wow, I'm so happy for the VeChain holders. They are working with Bayer China. It was revealed in the interview given to the VC Beat, an online Chinese media. And the product will be bound with a unique QR code, and then it's registered with the V chain ID, and that'll be carried all through the product life cycle. So it's got that valuable data relating to that product. This is very, very important for food and medicine. And when we look at the VC Beat interview, the transparency that it provides improves the safety. It sure does. This product solves a real problem. I want to say congratulations to Sonny Lou. He's doing a very good job and I'm happy for all those VeChain holders. It was nearly up 8% in the last 24 hours. I wish I could say that we have the same response when there is good news for XRP, but everybody knows that there just isn't a lot of retail investment push for news as of late. Well, I think that will change when the right combination of news comes out. All right, this next lily pad is about a tweet that came from Brad Garlinghouse yesterday. And he tweeted that it's time for the US regulators to step up and lean into digital currencies that remaining complacent is setting the US back as China's gripped grip on both crypto and fiat payments become stronger. So I know some people think that United States is not asleep at the wheel, that they're actually working behind the scenes. I tend to disagree. And I don't think they're sleeping at the wheel, but I think right now there's just a lot of inefficiencies and their focus is towards other aspects. And one of those aspects is really, I think, clear in the 32 bills of crypto and blockchain that are out there as of April 28th right now in the US, 13 of them focus on the regulatory aspects. Five of them promote ways that use technology that is shown there in the gray, gray so 16% of those. But how many will actually get through? Well, I think it's lucky if there's one or two in that is probably going to be ones that are focused on or geared towards slowing down Libra and also ones that cover the treatment for tax <laughs> because you know if there's a way to guarantee more clarity in tax you'll see that now I rarely, rarely make a request from Ripple. I think I never have, but I'd sure like to get a quarterly report from their work that's being done in Washington, D.C. This is Ron Hammond. He was hired for the govern government relations last August. I haven't heard anything from him. And then 
In October, Craig Phillips was hired. He joined the board, actually, and he is going to uh, lead Ripple's uh, team to advise them on strategic regulatory opportunities. He's very qualified to get results because not only is he an ex Morgan Stanley guy and a BlackRock guy, but he served as the counselor to the Secretary of the Treasury, Steve Mnuchin. So I don't know, but boy, I'd love to see these guys get some feedback uh, to everybody. And Michelle Bond could probably chime in too. She's Ripple's global head of government relations. She sits on the board of the Blockchain Association, which unfortunately had a little bit of bad news at the end of April. They actually put together a brief uh, to try to help kick the messaging platform in their um, trouble that they got into with the SEC as as a um, illegal security. And unfortunately, the day that that uh, brief was submitted, the uh, SEC filed an objection. They totally believed that the Blockchain Association, which includes Coinbase, Kraken, and among others, is hardly objective dispassionate or neutral. <laughs> the regulator even alleged the brief could be well financed by a multi-million dollar defend crypto litigation fund, which is overseen by the Blockchain Association and received a $2 million donation from Kick <laughs> as its original founder last year. So no, unfortunately, uh, the association didn't have a voice in this case. Let's hope that's not going to be the same for more cases going forward. And the annual lobbying cost of Ripple Labs is shown here on the opensecret.org site. And this is a site that really tries to maintain some of that um, transparency for lobbying. You can see in 2015, $150,000 was spent. 2017, $50,000 were spent. And then there was quite a jump in 2018, up to $450,000 spent. 2019 had a little over 200,000. And now we're in 2020. And at the end of Q1, $80,000 has been spent. And kind of sticking with regulation here, this is Kevin Lee. He's Ripple's head of Southeast Asia, and he will be speaking at the virtual Finnovate conference from July 6th to the 10th, which I'm very interested in because there are some really good speakers uh, lined up. But he gave an interview to the Filipino media last week, and um, that is the business mirror. And you can see that in this article, he's really talking about how regulators and industry players are key to the fintech's growth. And uh, there is some interesting quotes where he said that Ripple is always in coordination with regulators to address regulatory concerns, conduct sandbox testing, or the evaluation of the software in an isolated setting, and even assist in implementing national on-demand liquidity framework. Very interesting. Ripple's optimistic that more fintech players will be entering the scene given that the country is pushing for financial inclusion. And even banks and financial institutions are making their way towards fintech solutions and streamlining their banking processes. And the Philippines, they're ready. They're ready to embrace the digital platforms for banking services. Yeah, I think they are ahead of the US for sure. So central banks, yeah, they should strike a balance. That is definitely correct. All right. If you saw my video yesterday, I need not explain this picture of Faisal Khan. I think it tells it all. And if you didn't watch, well, you can go watch and then you'll go, aha, when you see this picture. All right, everybody, let's jump to the fluff. So here is a 
slice, a sliver of the Tokyo skyline. You know, the whole city, 360 within the Yamanote line, which is that inner circle train line, is the downtown. So there is no just one area, but this is looking at Minato-ku. And Minato-ku is um, the home of Tokyo Tower, which is really, uh, in my opinion, the symbol of Tokyo. Now there has since been another Tokyo constructed and is up, and that's the Tokyo Sky Tree. But because this one is the one that was started as far as construction in 1958 and was really uh, completed for the first Olympics held in this country. And gosh, I don't know, there's just something really special about Tokyo Tower. And it's used really to communicate a lot of different events in the world. I remember I told you that they lit this up in blue to support the health workers around the world through this glo global crisis that we're having. Um, that was kind of a, a global symbol and uh, it took place when the Olympics were announced that they were going to come to Tokyo. It was lit up in all the colors of the Olympics. And when you have a breast cancer awareness month, it gets lit up in pink. So you follow me. It, it is always uh, commuting, communicating some message. Well, unfortunately, that uh, tower has been closed for the last couple of months. And yeah, this is the sign that was posted. And it's it's something you get used to when you live in Japan. And that's the use of English in kind of some strange ways. But that sign has been removed. And now you can actually, as of today, climb the 600 stairs, which are the outer stairs to the uh, 150 meter or 450 foot level. So this open this open air walk is uh, one that if you do complete it, yeah, don't take don't think you can take the elevator down. You have to walk down. But if you do complete it, you get a certificate and this certificate will prove that you actually did it. And it reminded me of the very best free souvenir when you come to Tokyo. Please be sure to bring some blank cards or some really good paper that you can frame when you get back home. But at all the major stations, especially I think every station in that inner line called the Yamanote line, there is always a little table with a a uh, rubber stamp and an ink pad and it's where you can make your own memorial stamp that proves that you went to that station <laughs> and it's really something that sometimes is just beautiful i mean here is an example of how intricate the designs can be this is something that is a little bit on the nature side with some trees and you can see mount fuji in the background um, they're just beautiful, really just beautiful. If you go to Shinagawa, it not only has one, it has many. Now, and this is not always the case. This is a little bit on the rare side, but they have some of their old vintage ones. This is something that Japan has been doing for years and years and years. Here's one that you can get that was uh, made in 1985 to celebrate the bullet train, the Shinkansen model that came out. Here's one that has Godzilla. <laughs> Here's one that, I don't know, I think this is an advertisement from a, from a product. I'm just not sure what this product is. But the stamps are so fun to have. And how cool is that to take home uh, a stamp that can be framed up? And if you get to the station that is across from where the sumo tournament is held. This is Ro Goku. You can get this stamp here, which of course is the best, don't you think? All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.